Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. As you can see from the title, I'm gonna be going through my entertainment list, things that I've been enjoying watching and reading through the fall months. Back in September, actually, I posted a video talking about the stuff that I was interested in watching and reading. So this is pretty much like a follow-up, letting you guys know what I actually watched and read versus what was all on my list because I definitely did not hit everything. I kind of fell in a specific hole which you're gonna see a theme here um, when I get into it but yeah the first category I wanted to get into was movies now I'm the hugest fan of the conjuring universe anything paranormal I thoroughly love things like that um, I've always been a horror fan ever since I was a little bitty bitty baby um, maybe like two, three years old, I used to be up in the middle of the night with my godparents eating McDonald's and watching Chucky and all kind of scary movies. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. My mom was like, something's wrong with my kid. <laughs> But I just love it so much. I love the thrill. I love the scariness. I love that, you know, it's like a little adrenaline rush for me sometimes. Definitely when there's suspenseful parts where you're just like, <gasps> you know, I low-key love it, even though it do be scary. So when The Nun 2 came out in early September, I was all over it. I was like, yes, me and my brother, we locked eyes and we were like, we're watching this together um, because he's another horror fan and we watch movies together because if not, I was always left watching scary movies by myself growing up, like middle school, high school, nobody in my household enjoyed the horror like I did. <laughs> but The Nun was great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't as scary as like her other movie was. Um, I forgot which movie she came out. Was it like another Conjuring she came out in? I can't think off the top of my head. But when she first made an appearance, that is when I was like, wow, she's scary. But this one, since it's like her backstory, her when her villain arc kind of started it wasn't all that scary but i do love learning about her she's one of my favorite demons if i'm honest which is kind of morbid to say but i like her style the girl is shysty as hell and that leads me kind of to the next one with the exorcist believer when that came out in October, again, I was so excited because I grew up watching the original Exorcist and um, I was a big fan. And so when they were coming out with this spinoff or this second movie, I was like, I wonder where they're going to take this because, you know, you can't really redo that movie like nobody hasn't really tried to redo the original exorcist when i saw the trailer to this i was excited and i like that one of the leading acts was black so i thoroughly enjoyed it i love the connection between um the black girl and her dad but i really liked the storyline a lot of people were saying that they didn't enjoy it it kept me interested they took certain parts of the original without completely like copying and pasting it and like retelling the same story now up there with the conjuring universe i really love the insidious um universe as well i had to rewatch all of them because the red door came out in july but i wanted to wait until spooky season to watch it but but to get myself ready, me and my brother did like a little binge sesh and we watched all the Insidious movies from beginning to end so that we can remember the storyline because it's been a while since they came out with an Insidious movie and I have not been like re-watching any of them but loved it. Definitely want to buy these. Like I know that we're getting out of the era of like DVDs and stuff. But I genuinely want a copy of Insidious, The Conjuring, so that I can have a little collection because I just love these movies. And I really can't wait for the last one because the way that this one ended, it seems like they're going to have at least one more movie. So I'm excited to see where the father and son duo goes. Ooh, The House at the End of the Street. This popped up on my YouTube recommended one day. I love Jennifer Lawrence as an actress, so I had to watch, I had to tune in. I'm like, I've never seen this before. 
So I watched it. It was great about her moving into this house in this neighborhood where nobody had lived there in a long time. You know, it has a story to it. <laughs> and then, you know, they find out or she finds out the truth of everything and all this stuff kind of happens. But um, it was somewhat of like horror suspense kind of thing. I didn't expect it to be good, but it was a pretty good movie. And like it picked up really fast. There was like a crazy plot twist within it that I didn't even see coming. So I rated a four out of five, but one of the characters I like died. So that's why I didn't give it a five out of five because I'll be petty like that. <laughs> no one will save you. Mm, it was an iffy. I mean, I definitely would not watch it again. I was just so confused. <laughs> the whole time because I'm just like is this girl having some type of episode or are these aliens really invading her town because why was she the only one that didn't get that didn't get possessed I just was so confused so if you've watched it let me know what you thought about it because it was like this had this movie had so much potential and don't get me wrong the suspense was on 10 like 10 out of 10 i didn't know what was coming next and what was gonna happen like i'm questioning my sanity <laughs> the lead actress did a great job she sold me on the story okay i thought i was her for a lot of that movie because i'm just like i don't even know what i would do in this and she did her thing <laughs> so if you're a fan of sci-fi alien invasion movies a little bit of suspense or maybe a lot of suspense then you would enjoy this movie. I mean, I enjoyed it. It just, I would rate it like a, a three and a half out of five, just because it was just like a deeper meaning to the movie that just went over my head, unless it was just straight to the point and it was just an alien evasion. But the way, the way they took the story, it was just like, what is really going on here? <laughs> A little break from the suspense. This is the only like romance movie that I watched during this time. It's called Erin Guard, The Art of Seduction. And it's on Netflix. I mean, I love a period piece about romance. Like Bridgerton, I guess that would be a very popular one. But it's basically about an artist that wants to be a player, a little Casanova. And I'm sure that works for him because, you know, being an artist back in those times, you were traveling a lot, you were seeing different towns and people and like you were living that life, period, where you can have all the hoes in different area codes. I mean, people still doing that these days, but back then, I mean, you were always on the move. There was no way of tracking someone down. You know, it was very hard. You had to go by he say, she say. But anyway love this movie definitely will watch it again i mean he wanted to be a little casanova fell in love with one of uh, the prestigious women in the court her daddy was have was not having it okay he was not having it because that girl was gonna marry like a duke or someone of a status you know not a mere artist so he couldn't really like approach the girl the way he wanted to so him and one of the prestigious ladies of the court that he worked for she had a thing for him but he turned her down and they kind of had like some little friendship after that and they made a deal and was pretty much like well if you can bag her then you win but if you don't then you can't reject me again because she really wanted to sleep with this man i say check it out i'm not gonna spoil and tell you if he won the bet or not but that was an interesting bet to begin with anyway back to the spooky stuff i ended up watching possum somebody in the comment section told me to watch this movie um and i did I did because I've never watched it, never even heard of it. And I kind of like indie movies, you know, and this is the vibe it gave me. Um, it was like an indie horror movie. And again, another one where I was completely lost, didn't know what the heck was happening. I kind of was getting it. But then it was just like, as soon as I think I know something, something will happen. And I'll be like, nope okay that theory was wrong and it was just like I didn't know what was really happening until like the last 10 or 20 minutes of the movie where everything is revealed and then you're like oh wow creepy scary gross is what I was feeling gross 
Transformers Rise of the Beast. This is not necessarily scary, spooky, but I love Transformers. Love an action movie. Well, and just to see how like this movie just keeps unfolding, like how many Transformer movies is out? And it's just like something new every time. Now they do have a formula to the movie, don't get me wrong. Like we always start off with some type of war battle. If you watch Transformers, you know what I mean. They are not easy to sit through, might I add, because they're like freaking two hours long. So it's just like sitting through those movies sometimes be tough. But I love Transformers. Ooh, a fun one was Monster House. I posted that video on my channel. It's a Halloween classic, so I have to watch it every year. I dressed up as the little girl. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. The animation is impeccable, and the storyline is really good. The Marksman, I just posted that on my channel. It's the video before this one, actually. And it stars Liam Neeson, which he is the guy from Taken. And if you haven't seen Taken, you need to see that. <laughs> One, two, and three, I think. See him in the Marksman and him playing like this role, like he does it well. So when I saw this, I was just like, oh my God, how can, how have I not seen this? And it's basically about him helping um, an immigrant boy get to his family in the United States. And it was a journey and a half, but I enjoyed it. The character development, chef's kiss impeccable incident in the ghost land was another one that was recommended to me by someone in the comments and another one where i was just like shook gross Ugh. because this storyline was insane a single mother and her daughters move into this home that their aunts owned but she passed away and then these intruders come the same night they moved in. Didn't even get 24 hours. Kept them captive in the house. Not really kidnapped them, but kept them captive in the house and was doing crazy things to them. Turning them into dolls and just, just, just doing crazy things. And, you know, they had to find a way to escape and all of that. So the stuff that they were doing to them, it just was bad, like, and intense very intense a lot of that movie i had to cut out because i also posted this on my channel and a lot of it i had to like cut out or censor in a way because it was crazy would i watch it again yes yes i will but obviously with somebody who haven't watched it before that's the only time i could sit through that again i give that movie a, a, like a 10 out of 5. up next was ghost rider Thoroughly enjoyed it. He's my favorite vigilante to date. The man is a skull with flames on a motorcycle. Let me know if you're interested in me watching the other ones because I only watched the first one. Let me know if you want me to watch the second one. The last movie I want to uh, talk about is Five Nights at Freddy's. I enjoyed that movie. It was deeper than just the animatronics and i've never played the game but i have my favorite youtubers who have played it and i've loved watching them play it one of them being cory kenshin and he starred in the movie so that was even great to see content creators doing big things so i thoroughly enjoyed the movie it had a really good cast it was a couple of people in there where i was just like oh my god like i love they're the movies that they play in just to see them working together like josh hutchinson and elizabeth lail just seeing corey even like having like even the ending clip like that is huge that is so huge and i'm just so proud of him anyway on to the next category which is tv shows Watched American Horror Story season 12, delicate, loving it, waiting for part two. I've been watching American Horror Stories for so many years. I, I kind of grew up on the show a little bit um, or grew up with the show. So excited to see how this season ends and see if Anna can be saved because your girl is in deep currently. And I wouldn't say she don't deserve this because she is putting herself in these situations. But at the same time, like I can understand that like her intention behind it is not malicious. Like she just wants to be a famous actress and seeing Kim, act in this is just amazing virgin river 
Now this is a romantic show that I watched. I watched a romantic movie and I watched a romantic show and then I'm gonna get into a romantic book I read but that's not till later. Mostly I kind of stuck to horror, suspense, thriller, stuff like that. I'm a fan of the show. It's very soap opera E. It gives me the vibes of like a uh, general hospital or like like the young and the restless. Like it gives me that type of energy. But this one is like about a doctor who loses her family and she moves to this small town called Virgin River and she's starting her whole life over. She moves on, she falls in love and there's so many things that happen after that between her partner's life because he has a past that comes back around and you know she has a past that comes back around and you know they're working through their own like stuff you know, because they both have hard pasts. So they're coming together and like, you know, they're trying to kill through that. And it's just such a great show. It just gives me the feels. It warms my heart and soul because it's just like, and they touch on like real, real topics and like the way they go about, you know, acting it out in the episode. It's just like, or just delivering that message, should I say. It's just so great. I love it. If you're into that kind of stuff, Virgin River is the one for you. And it's an easy watch. I love that. The Other Black Girl, I cannot wait for season two. I need it now. I need to see what happens with my girl Nella. I kind of did a video on it. My plan was to post every episode kind of like I did for American Horror Story. I wanted to do for this show as well. But copyright was not having it. Like, no matter what I did, they would not let me post any of the episodes at all. They just fought me every tooth and nail. But I thoroughly enjoyed The Other Black Girl. 10 out of 10 watch. It's, uh, it gave me the vibe of, um, like, Get Out, but the Black people were, are in on it. It was based on a book. I didn't read the book. Same with American Horror Story. That was also um, delicate. That was also based on a book. If you guys enjoyed Get Out and stuff like that, then I'm sure you would like The Other Black Girl. Now we're gonna get into the anime part of the TV show category. So the first anime slash animation I watched was Castlevania Nocturne and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I watched the first part of Castlevania and this season it was like the new generation. So like the first one, was about like their parents and the backstory of how all this stuff got started. And now Castlevania Nocturne is more of like, now they're children. Now they have spawned children and now their children is taking on the same battle, the same thing, and even more. Kind of like a dark animation. So if you're not a fan of like vampires and fantasy and stuff like that, then don't watch it. It's kind of aimed around Dracula and stuff. So if you like Dracula, definitely would like Castlevania. Um, Demon Slayer. Now my brother is the biggest anime head that I know to this day. We grew up watching anime. Like I need to rewatch Naruto. And let me know if you guys would want me to do that on the channel here because I would. But if not, I'm going to be binge watching it behind the scenes anyway. But Demon Slayer, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I can see what the craze is about. Grease through that show. Not that it had like a thousand episodes, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I want to see how Nezuko and Tanjiro story continues. And I fell in love with their whole little um, group. Inosuke, Inosuke, like he's one of my favorite. Like he's just so unhinged and I love it. And I just want to see what happens for them. You know, does she ever get cured? Do they ever find peace? Can she stop being hunted by other demons? Will they be left alone? How will all this end? I want to know. Another good one that I'm currently still watching because a new episode comes out every week, which is Spy Family. It's pretty much in the title. Like, it's about a family who are secret spies. The little girl can um, read minds and he doesn't know that because he adopts her for this mission to blend in and be normal so that he can continue to be undercover spy. And the little girl is like reading his mind and stuff. And then he didn't want to adopt her 
after all and like left her alone because his job is dangerous and he knows that he can possibly put her in danger and he just didn't want that then he thinks like dang i need to find her a mom because if i find her a mom then i can go and be a spy and she can still be safe you know and not by herself because he does work a lot as well but long story short he ends up finding this girl who's also like a secret assassin she is badass them as a family is just so good it's just such a good heartwarming easy anime to watch but because nobody knows she's a mind reader and she just be doing the most and like the spy and the assassin don't know about each other like they don't know what kind of jobs that they actually do they lie to each other about it like they haven't told each other that they're like secret agents everybody lying to each other but it's just so funny to watch because they be trying to cover up their lies and like the little girl knows everything like she she knows that her mom and her dad be lying to each other and lying to her because she can read minds. So she knows when they're telling the truth. She knows what they're thinking at all given times. So there's really no boundary there. But if you're interested in something like that, it's so good. And I definitely recommend the watch. Dororo is up next. These are one of the ones that's pretty dark. I cannot wait for the next season to come out. That is another one that I need to see what happens. It's basically about this um demonic chapel or temple in their town and like they give offerings to these demons to keep them from attacking their people and all this stuff. But the king took his little over there and he sold his unborn child soul to the devil. So when he was born, he was just like skull bones. And it was disheartening and like technically he was dead because if you have no organs or anything like that, he ends up living. He ends up surviving. So he had a strong will to live and he survived that. And he has to now fight against these demons to get his body back because they basically stole that away from him before he was born. He was a really good fighter. And every time he kills a demon, he gains a piece of his body back. Great anime. One of my favorite. Like Dororo is up there for me. But the next one that I rewatched was The Legend of Korra because my brother did not watch that one at all. I loved Korra and her story. You know, she brought something different. She was a whole different airbender, which I liked, you know, so it's not just another repeat of the original story with the last airbender. The last TV show slash anime that I watched is Two Year Eternity and it's about this orb that gets created by some type of god or something and it gets sent down to planet earth. Its whole mission is to save earth because this god knows that destruction is gonna come and whatever he touches that doesn't have a life in it he can become. So he became a rock somehow this wolf ended up dying on top of this rock and since the wolf died and there's nobody in the body he became the wolf and then he came across this boy and they were together for a while until that boy passed away and then he became the boy it got to the point where he was meeting people and people were like dying for him because it was like they knew what he was here for like they knew that he was here to save the people he was immortal he couldn't die and since he was born with literally no skills because he was a rock for a long time and then he became a wolf so then he learned how to track and hunt he learned what the boy knew and every time he would take over a body he would learn whatever skills that they had like he met this little girl and she knew how to climb she was very good at climbing she ended up passing away he became her and then boom he knew how to climb and it was just like that's how he started to gain his skill sets and it's just such an interesting story that i've never seen or heard of before so i was sold i was like oh my god this is so good last but not least the book category the first book i read was the invisible girl um again i wrote about this book on my community page it was a very slow burner it was a um mystery thriller it was a lot of backstory and like different timelines with different characters so it kind of dragged for a bit 
But once the girl went missing and the police got involved, that's kind of like where the story kind of picked up. So if you enjoy a slow burn, then you're going to enjoy this because it was a good storyline. I just didn't like how slow it was, but the ending pulled everything together. It touched on a couple serious topics because there was a rapist in her neighborhood and he was on the loose, attacking women, touching women and all of those things and then you find out who it is and why they're doing it sick anyway the next book (laughs) i ended up reading after that was the family upstairs series and it has a sequel that's called the family remains this story was crazy as well it's about a family who had money and they ended up losing it all They let these people move into their house to help pay the bills. And the guy was weird. He ended up creating like this whole cult thing, like controlling the whole household, the original owners of the home. And like a lot of sick shit was happening in the household. I'm not even going to get into it (laughs) because it gets deep and it gets dark because it was kids involved in it. And then those kids grew up. And once those kids grew up, you think that ended? No, it didn't. And that's when the family remains. How they're functioning as human beings in regular society after them there being in a cult for most of their lives. Like, a lot of stuff happened. Babies were had. Drugs were taken. But it was deep and dark. You will like this if you're into that. It's gripping, I'll tell you that. Anyway, I had to take a little break from the suspense and thriller because it was just too deep and too real for me. So I went into a little romance. So my one romantic series that I read, it was like a short series. It's called Love Me With Lies by Taryn Fisher. Now this series have three books. And if you're into a love triangle, then you're going to love these books. It don't start off as a love triangle, but it ends up being one. But as you can see, um, each cover of the book has each person that's within this love triangle. Like even though it was somewhat of a love story, it was still like suspense and thriller because one of the girls was psychotic. Like literally she needs help. She, I, I hated her. And like, and hate is a strong word, but I'm just like, this girl needs to go to jail. (laughs) And it makes me think about all the people who have enough money to prevent themselves suffering from their consequences. To see how this girl bought her way out of so much trouble, it just sickens me. I mean, if you like a little toxicity, a little drama, a little tea, you're gonna enjoy this. We all got a pass and she chose to be a villain but anyway the last book i want to talk about is a fire in the flesh by jennifer l armentrout i think her name is and she mostly writes stories that has to do with romantic fantasy and i love it and i'm sure a lot i know a lot of people love it because so many people talk about akatar and i read those books when it first came out because that's how big of a fan of fantasy that i am so now seeing that everybody is just like on the bandwagon with akatar I love that. A Fire in the Flesh, it's book three of the Fl- um, Flesh and Fire series, which is also a spinoff from Blood and Ash, which I also read, currently waiting for the next one to come out. In this book, they have magical powers. The fighting scenes, impeccable. The romance, impeccable. Like the way everything just comes together. If you like Akatar and Fourth Wing, you're going to love jennifer's books i'm currently reading crescent city it's been on my tbr for years okay because that book is like 800 pages long and i'm just like intimidated so wish me luck because it's gonna be a long one i don't even know if i'm gonna be able to get to any christmas books i had to take it back to sarah j mass because everybody was raving about akatar and i was just like oh my god like i don't love it that much to read it again but I love Sarah J Mass as an author to work my way through her roster of books that is everything that I've been been watching and reading recently for the fall season for the spooky season let me know if you're interested in watching any of these 
shows or movies or if you're interested in any of the books that I've read also leave me some recommended now that you know what I'm kind of into leave me something that you think I will enjoy that's along the lines of the things that I listed here but anyway give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're interested and I'll see you guys in the next video bye